Now, there's a hero of mine, and I'm using hero in the feminine sense. Um, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll come to her in a moment. Um, one of the laws of nature, which I think is probably the most important of all the laws of nature, so let's get it out of the way, is the conservation of energy. You know, and you're all familiar with what happens when a ball rises uh, and comes back down again. It might have a lot of kinetic energy initially. It loses kinetic energy as it acquires potential energy. Then as it drops back down again, it loses potential energy and acquires kinetic energy. But the sum of the two, potential and kinetic energies, remains constant. So there's um, energy is conserved. And the conservation of energy is hugely important, largely because it is the foundation of causality. I mean, in order for um, to be able to talk about the sequence of events that take place in take and talk about it rationally, you need causality. And in order to have causality, you need some kind of policeman in the, in the universe. And the policeman that I think underlies obeying, uh, allowing for causality is the, is the conservation of energy. That we've got a certain amount of energy in the universe, and anything you do cannot change by one calorie or one erg, or these days, one joule the total amount of energy in the universe. Doesn't mean to say that nothing happens, it just means to say that there is a global constraint on the total amount of energy. Hugely important. Causality is the basis, if you like, of science, and science in collaboration with causality is the basis of understanding. So hugely, hugely important. And my, my hero is Emmy Noether, German mathematician, um, driven out of Göttingen by misogyny, ending up in um, Pennsylvania. And all, um, it seems to me that all mathematicians either die close to zero or close to infinity. And um, regrettably, she was one of the unlucky ones who died close to zero. Um, but in the course of her rather brief life, she established a number of extraordinary results in mathematics. And the one theorem that I want to mention to you, it's not going to be an elaborate theorem, is um, that uh, she established that wherever you have a, a conservation law, that is, wherever you have a law which says that nothing changes, even though events take place. Wherever you have a conservation law, you have an underlying symmetry. So conservation laws emerge from symmetry. The conservation of energy is a conservation law. So um, Eminert's theorem implies that there is an underlying symmetry. So if we can identify the symmetry, and if we can understand where the symmetry comes from, then we shall have established the origin of that conservation law, the conservation of energy in this case. And the Eminetus theorem says that the conservation of energy is due to the symmetry of time. Specifically, it is due to the uniformity of time. So that if time goes tick, 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 uniformly on the cosmic scale, then energy is conserved. So we can account for the conservation of energy by asking why time on a cosmic scale is uniform. Um, and the, well, so let me just say that if time were not uniform, so tick, 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 and so on, then energy would not be conserved. I mean, probably this non-uniform would be 
non-uniformity of time is like it happens in some lectures such as this, that there are dragging moments and, and quick moments and so on. But um, really you've got to identify the, the conservation of energy is due to the uniformity of time. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.